Be'ez HaShem is we begin Perek Tashi, the ninth chapter in the Rambam's Hilchas, Abaydis Kachav, Mechukas Abedeha, the laws of Abed Zara and the, the, the laws of those who worship it, and the Sefer the Book of Knowledge, which we continue the theme of the previous Perakim, and discussing specifically regarding staying away from idolatry. In this Perak we discuss regarding the prohibition about doing business dealings with the Abed Zara. The Rambam gets Allah off regarding the, when it's by the holiday of the idol worshippers. Three days before the holiday of the idol worshippers, you're not allowed to buy from them because they'll be happy and that they made a sale and they're going to go give thanks to their deity and it's going to be a Jew who's causing that. Or or to sell them something that will last where they'll be able to use it on the holiday and again they're going to be rejoicing because of the Jew. So it's forbidden. So to lose them, it's forbidden to borrow from them because they have to be concerned that they might thank their deity that the Jew needs them, or to obviously lend them will they have, well, have money to use, to collect from them, because actually he'll be happy that he paid up his debts, or to pay back to them, obviously he'll be happy. Now that's a problem that's only been milva bishtar, when it's a loan in the document, where since the money is guaranteed, so there's no real saving of money, so you now go ahead and collect from them, or if you have collateral. So you ha- you're guaranteed, so you shouldn't be collecting from them. Of a milba peh, but an oral loan, nifron hem, you could collect from them even on these days. Because it's like saving from them, you want to make sure you get your money. You also allowed to sell them something which will not last so long. Could go in your rockets, potatoes, like vegetables in a cooked dish. That you can sell ad yom chagam until the day of the holiday. Not, I mean, not on the day of the holiday itself, but before, because it's not going to last anyways for the holiday. Now, when we say that all these things are forbidden, is Be'er Tisrael in the land of Eretz Yisrael. A Bashar says, but in other lands, which we live and we depend on doing business with them, in the Asa Eliyam Chagim Levad, it's only forbidden the day of the holiday itself. Now, other, if someone violates, and Eretz Yisrael, he goes and he does business dealings with them the three days before the holiday, it's still permitted to have benefit from that sale. Now, however, whoever does business dealing with them on the day of the holiday itself, that's forbidden to have benefit. It's forbidden to send a gift, a present to an idol worshiper on the day of his holiday. Unless you know for sure, they do not admit to this idol, idol and he doesn't worship it. And the other way also, if the idol worshiper sends a gift to the Jew on the day of his holiday, of the idol worshiper, you shouldn't receive the, the gift from him. If you're concerned for hatred that he's going to be upset, you should take, from, take it in front of him. But you don't have benefit from it. Unless you know definitively, that this non-Jew is not an idol worshiper and does not admit, or does not uh, acknowledge this false deity. Let's say the holiday of these idol worshippers were for many days. Shleisha, your boy, Sar was a period of three or four or even ten days. So all those days, even ten days, is like one day, meaning it's the day of the holiday. But kul masuch all forbidden. Im shleisha with the three days that's before the start of the holiday. Now the edoimim, according to some gersoys, that was from edoim, oiv de avoid the they are idol worshippers. The yom edishin who yemedim. Sundays are their holiday. The figure there for us, loss of velocity on the Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, in Eretz Yisrael, which the halacha is three days before, one is not allowed to do business with them. Every Thursday and Friday, obviously Shabbos, you don't do business of every single week because that's three days before their holiday of Sunday. We don't have to say that's forbidden on Sundays itself. That's forbidden all through, everywhere because of their holiday. And that's the custom with all their holidays, not to do the business on the day itself, everywhere in the world, in Eretz Yisrael, even three days before. A day when the idol worshippers gather together to coronate their king, and they sacrifice and they, they praise to their God, that's considered a day of their holiday. But it's considered, like we said before, like all their other holidays. But an idol worshiper makes a holiday for himself. He, he, he admits to his idol and he, he praises it and, and he gives thanksgiving. 
let's say, Shanel by the day of his, that he was born, or the day that he cuts up his beard or his ponytail, which they would cut around it and keep it for, like, to cut it once a year, or the day that he was taken out from, he was survived from the sea, or the day that he was let out of jail, or the day that he makes a, a festive um, celebration for his son's wedding, or similar types of things. In that day itself, only that man, not for others, because that's that person's own individual uh, holiday. So to, let's say, the day where for them, uh, uh, someone died, they made into a holiday. It's only those who do it, it's forbidden only that day. Now, however, any death which they actually burn the person's vessel, so and they, uh, they burn some type of incense, but you do, you should know that there must be some element of idolatrous practice over there. Now, now however, the day of the holiday is only forbidden for those who worship it. But for those who rejoice in it, and they eat and they drink, and they keep the holiday only because of custom, or even they cover the melch because of the honor for the king, for the government, but they don't, have, they don't uh, give any thanks for this uh, uh, holiday or for this Abedizah. Those non-Jews, it's permitted to do business dealings with them. Allah above regarding the sales um, that are forbidden. Things that are distinct, for that species of that type of Abedizah, that's in that location. It's forbidden to sell to the worshippers of that that place loyalum. You're never allowed to sell those things because that's distinct that you always use that for their service. Now things that are not distinct special only for the Baidazar, you could sell it unspecific. You might use it for Baidazar, you might use it for personal, you're allowed to sell it. Unspecific. Now, let's say the idol, the idol worship is coming to buy it. Specifies that he's buying it for the worship of the idol. Then also, you know, sell it to him. Unless you invalidated it from a sacrifice for the bedazar, because they don't sacrifice something that's missing, that's deficient to their bedazar. So if you make it deficient, then you allowed to sell it to him, even though he claims he's doing it for his bedazar. Let's say he was mixed in in the package. Things that are distinct for the Bidazar, things that are not distinct for the Bidazar. For example, the Bainazaka, pure frankincense, which they would use distinctly for the Bidazar. That was included with black frankincense. So, like, it was a package, like, you know, 10, 10, buy 9, get 1 free. So, you could sell it all unspecific. And the Ain Khajim, that concern should be Laka, the Zaka, Lavat, 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 by itself, to use it for the Baidazar. In case of anything like that, as long as it's not distinct only for this, that it's being used for the Baidazar, one could sell the whole package. Just like you cannot sell to the idol worshippers. That's, that strengthens the hands of the, uh, those who worship the Baidazar, so you can't sell them things that are used for the Baidazar, and so on. So you cannot sell to the idol worshippers things, things that are harmful for the public. For example, dubim barayas, beers and lions, or klezain and weapons, or kabbalah mishal shalayas, and different types of chains. Ve'im ashchiz lehem asazoyin, you cannot sharpen their swords. And b'chol sh'asul l'machel lebi kachav, what do you mean I'll sell to an idol worshiper? Asul l'machel li stroll, you know I'll sell to a Jew, ha'chashud limko lebi kachav, that he's suspected to sell, he might, to the idol worshiper, so he might be a middleman, so you can't even sell to him. V'chid asul l'machel li stroll, you know I'll sell to an idol worshiper, so he might sell to the idol worshiper, so he might be a middleman, to a Jew that's abandoned, because although he doesn't intend, but since he has to protect himself when he's stealing, he might harm people if you're not allowed to sell him any of those uh, tools either. Allah test. If there were Jews that dwelled amongst the idol worshippers, and they made a covenant, then you're allowed to sell weapons to the servants of the king, and his, and his troops. Because what do they use it for, these weapons? To wage war in Tzarei HaMadina with the oppressors of this country, Latzila, to save this country. Of an Imtzum and it turns out that they're protecting us, should they understand because we dwell in this country, and therefore you allow us to sell weapons uh, in that situation. Halacha Yud continues regarding uh, the halachas as it applies to certain cities or regarding certain fears. A city that has in it um, idol worship, has an idol, you'll have to go outside the city, but I'll go into the city that has the Abedizar. Let's say outside the city had Abedizar, you'll have to go in the city. If someone's going from place to place, you'll have to pass through the city 
that has in it a vaydazar. Now, but imagine when we say this, it's only if the road is distinct, only going to that place with this dabay dezar. But if there is another path, and he just happened to have been going through this road, then muta is permitted because it's, it, it is, his, his benefit is not recognizable because it is possible for him to go through a, another city and therefore that wouldn't be forbidden. One is not allowed to build even together with a, an idol worshiper. Keep a dome, that, that they put the Avedazar uh, beneath it. Now, Vim Avava Ovana, if he violated it and he did build it, the wages are permitted because the accessories of Avedazar are not forbidden until it's actually served. And it wasn't served yet. But it is initially forbidden to build it. But he could initially build a Traklin, the palace, or a Chatzar, or the court, or Shishpo, it's like, that has in it the, the dome, the, the actual um, mansion itself is permitted to be built. A city that has in it a vaydazar. Now, there were stores that had crowns in it and stores that were not, didn't have crowns on it. So, the ones that were crowned, they all have any benefit from whatever's inside that store. And the Sheikh has custom, because the presumption is, it's because of idolatry that it was crowned, so it's, it's because of a that whole store. And you now have benefit. Vishain mutaghs, those that are not crowned, mutaghs but not, you'll not have benefit from it. Chanuya shalabit skachavim. Now, regarding the stores of, of, of the Avaid Zara, Asla Sakhinala rent it, Nishamahana Bait Kham, because then you're gonna be giving benefit to the uh to the Avaid Zara's treasury, and that's forbidden. Allah Gimal Hamrich Bayas Lavid Skachab. Someone sells a house to uh idol worshipper, Dam of Asuran Bahana, its monetary proceeds is forbidden to have benefit, but you leave him the and Meaning for the Avedi Zara, if he sells the house for Avedi Zara, the money is offered to have benefit, and he throws it to the Dead Sea. But regarding idol worshippers, Yisrael, that they force the Jew, the Gosl base, and they steal his house. They meet the Avedi and they make it, they put the idol inside of it, and they make it into the temple. Dam of Mutar, then we don't penalize them, the money, the monetary proceeds are permitted. And actually, because of a Malabar Koshlam, you can actually have a, 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 the document written and, and verified in their courts to make sure he actually gets that money, the proceeds. Because that was uh, not his fault. The flutes of idol worshippers, Aslis, but the hen, it's forbidden to eulogize with them again. I'll have benefit from Avaidazar. You're allowed to go to the fear, to the uh, to the place where they sell of the uh, of the idol worshippers. you can buy from them animals, Avad, Meshvachis, Bigayusan, slaves and maidservants that are even in their Gentile state. Uvatam sod the sakram and houses and fields and vineyards. But Kaisa Mal Bakosham, you could even go ahead and have it written and verified in their courts. And they shook a muscle me them, because like saving from their hands, meaning it's an opportunity to get uh, assets, and, and therefore that's not considered as something that's a liability. Now, but remember, when we say this, it's only when you buy from a regular homeowner, who doesn't give special taxes. If you buy from a merchant, also that would be forbidden. Because he has to give taxes. And the taxes go to the Avodazar. It turns out you're benefiting the Avodazar, which is forbidden. Now, other than the and the Tagab, someone violated and he purchased from a merchant. So, in Behem Alokach, if he bought an animal and you don't have benefits, so what you do is, you have to cut off its hooves from the knee and or the ankle down. And if it was a garment or vessels that he bought, your cover, you have to let it rot. If he bought, if he bought money, or metal vessels, you leave them the milk, you throw it to the Dead Sea. And look at if you bought a slave, if he falls into a pit, you don't take him out, but you don't push him down into the pit. I look at this vav regarding when there's a party of Gentiles. So I bikachavim, Sha'as Livnoy Levita Mishta. An idol worshiper made for his son or his daughter a party, a, a wedding feast. So Aslahanis Musudas is forbidden to have benefit from his meal. Even for the Jew to eat and drink from his own food there is also forbidden. Since he's eating at a party of idol worshippers. When is it forbidden? When does it start being forbidden to eat by him? For when they start preparing and engaging in the meal preparations. And all the days of the festivities. And after the days of the festivities for a period of 30 days. Now, if he makes another party because of the wedding, then even after 30 days, us can be forbidden up until 12 months after that wedding. And this whole requirement of, of distance is because of the worship of 
the stars of the planets. Shnei Malik says in the pasuk, "Bekadolcha," because he's going to call you. Bechal to mezivcha, you're going to eat from his slaughtering. Blakach mem neisav levenecha, and then you're going to take from his daughters for your sons. Bezanu beneisav acher eloi heyin, and then his daughters, the Gentiles, the daughters are going to stray after their false deities. Vehisnus benecha acher eloi heyin, and then your sons are going to go also stray after their deities. And therefore, says the pasuk in Shmai, that one is not allowed to eat with them because of this prohibition that's going to lead towards this intermarriage and obviously of the idol worship. Look at the Zion continues regarding uh, nursing and regarding being a midwife. So Bas Yisrael, a Jewish woman, should not nurse the son of an idol worshiper. Because she's, she's nourishing, she's bringing up a, 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 a son that will worship Abed Zahar. Neither should she be a midwife, someone to give birth to the idol worshiper. But she could charge for midwifing. Because of the hatred, they're gonna they're gonna hold it against because we're paying you while you're not assisting. Now, now the non-Jewish woman, Mi'aledis is Basisol, could be the midwife for the Jewish woman. Ubinika is and she could also nurse the Jewish child in the presence of the mother. Again, as long so that the idol worshiper does not kill the child of the Jewish woman. Halachi Zion continues regarding when someone's on a journey to the Avedazara or to the market fear of the Vedazar. Ha'hochem lo tarpas abezikachavim. Teref is a derogatory terminology of uh, the, the, the Avedazara, where the people go on these long journeys to go to their um, Avedazara. Asa losses, velasi imam, when a person's on this journey, you not allowed to do business with them because he's going to go give thanks to the Avedazara when he gets there. But babam, those are coming back, mutarm is permitted because once they're already on their way back, we don't have to be concerned that they're going to go back and give thanks. But who that is only Shaliyu Kashudin Zebazet, only if they're not in a group of people, they're just a single individual, then we could presume that he's not going to go back, he's just going to go home. But Shemo Yukashudin, because if they were if they were a band of brothers, Shema Dait and Lafza, maybe then they they would intend to go back, and then it's forbidden even on their way back. Yisrola, ha hoilakal tabaz of Zikram, a Jew who's going to this uh, foolishness of the Vajazara. So Balicha on his way there, Muta lost the Balasimo. Actually, then you could do business with him. Because he might, might back out. Ultimately, he's a Jew. Uva Chazira Asa, so it's the inverse of the non-Jew. On the way back, it's forbidden because he's so connected. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna do a sale with him, he's gonna go back. You saw Mumma, the renegade Jew, being Balicha, being Chazira Asa, whether on the way there, whether on the way back, it's forbidden because on the way there, he also it's gonna be forbidden because we're not thinking he's gonna back out because he's already been rebellious for a long time. Aloch Yitchas. Yisrael shaholach liyorit shalav ezgacham. A Jew that uh, went to the market fair of the Abed Zara. So bechazira on his way back, asa losses losses him. You don't do business with him. Shem Abed Zara machal lehem sham. Maybe he had an idol in his possession. He sold it to them over there because if he had something else, why would he go there to sell? Why didn't he sell it to us? We have to suspect maybe he was selling them on Abed Zara. With me Abed Zara be Yisrael, and now the monetary proceeds of Abed Zara that's in the possession of a Jew, Asrum Ano, it's forbidden to have benefit. So you can't do business with him because then you're going to get the prohibited funds. Now Ubi Yadav be Kachavim, but in the possession of a non-Jew, Mutar Ano, it is permitted to have benefit. Ah, oh, Mamei Zeb, because of this, that the monetary value of Abed Zara in the hands of non-Jews are permitted. Noisim and Noisim Oiv be Kachavim, Habo Menyered Hahu. You're allowed to do business with the idol worshiper who's on his way back from that market fear. But like we said, but from the Jew, you now do business because for the Jew, it's the monetary proceeds are forbidden. Now, and now you now do the business with the renegade Jew, not on his way there because he's going to go there and give thanks to his Avoy Dezara. And not on his way back because, again, he has the monetary proceeds of Avoy Even though he's a mummer, he's still a Jew and therefore it is forbidden in his possession, those monetary proceeds.